So the, what, the big big part for me that I really wanted to get was to get cords mm -hmm. around it and the, the sort of cord part here, which is the main element of the track. It basically follows the um, harpsichord part. Uh, the harpsichord part was a sort of um, a main <coughs> part in the uh, in the original that was used in the chorus. So I sort of took that, had to work out the sort of the top line melody and then the, the bass chords, and and then it fitted pretty well with that sort of dead mousey sort of stabby sort of sound. So that became the focus of my track. Then after that, it was quite easy to lay everything out um, the way I did. I, th I think what's interesting with yours is <coughs> it's a really dark vocal mm. and. You kind of made it sound not happy, but it's it's pleasing if it's, it's yeah. More it's an up it's an uplifting sort of it's an track. uplifting track that whether well, the, the vocal I don't know. I would love to hear it out in a club and see whether I, whether it works. I I chatted to a few people yesterday about it in the office just because I, I I don't I'm not sure how the vocal sits. Hmm. I I really like it and think it really works, but it's really odd. And yeah, whether it's definitely a juxtaposition, you know. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, whether it alienate sort of. Clubbers, they'd be going. Either they would go, "That is genius," or, "What the hell is that?" Yeah, it's quite screamy. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, um, yeah. Once it got the chords, it, it was it was pretty logical progression from then. You know, I, I couldn't really have seen it going up too many other directions in my in my mind. Well, actually, I had when I, when I actually started, I had two. One was just like a straight. I think it was probably more along the lines of what you're doing, which was just straight driving thing, oh. sort of more electro bass bass lines and then it was when I'd actually figured out the chords that it sort of went more down that direction. So I think the chords thing was it was interesting for me because I didn't go anywhere near attempting to try and work them out. Mm. Because I, I'd started with when I started with those rack slips, I pulled them all down into tiny wee bits at the start and then just added delays and reverbs and stuff to them to create a kind of a droney sort of bed for the rest of the track. But because I'd pulled them all right down to the very start of each one of the loop. Uh, the first note or the first chord or whatever it is in all the loops was then C, so the whole bed then became a big C bed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <big> <laughs> <C bed. laughs> and uh, so when I got to that second bit, like the nice bit in the middle, it all then came out in C major. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So then I, when I went to think, right, I'm gonna well, if I drop the cello part over this nice bit, will that work? No, it doesn't. Will that work? No, it doesn't. But then I didn't need it at that at that point. Yeah. And I wasn't using the full vocal anyway. I was just using kind of wee chopped up bits over the noisy bit that didn't have any kind of key center. Mm -hmm. So just taking those wee bits and pieces, you know, kind of then pushed me in a in a different key than the original track was in, but still able to use those small elements of. The, yeah, the I mean that's one one of the weird things about the actual chord progression in the track that it, it starts on a big C major. Yeah. You know, and you know the the track is particularly dark. You know, mm. throughout and. You know, it goes from C major to lots of minors. You there's, know, there's a spooky element to the yeah. whole thing. You know, there's a real sort of twisted spookiness to the chord progression. Uh, Shall I have a listen to yours? Yeah, I'll have a listen. I'll, I'll have a chat about how I fumbled about for days. <laughs> 